and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum, and with me as my co-host this week, hello, hello, hello. It's Rob Shooter, one of the most, <laughs> one of the 100 most influential people in New York, according to Metropolitan Magazine. Congratulations! Thank you very much. What a surprise! Did you know about that? Uh, I yeah, I think I sort of knew. I Rob forgot. Shooter. Thank you very much, Rob Shooter. Here I am, very influential. And uh, so, you know, we're going to give you some good news this week for a change. The Democrat-led U.S. House of Representatives passed our Equality Act, uh, the federal LGBT rights bill. Big, it, big news. Did it did, and Taiwan becomes the first Asian country to enact marriage equality, although just like here in the USA, the fight for equal rights it's not over yet. But that's a tremendous breakthrough. Big, on, the, big. on the other hand, mm. Alabama has enacted, you've heard about it, the most draconian anti-abortion law in the country. Alabama, also public <laughs> broadcasting, public television in Alabama, has censored a gay character on a cartoon show for children. Terrible. Uh, the CEO of the pharmaceutical company, Gilead, was confronted at a congressional hearing by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and by AIDS activists over his profiteering on Truvada. And we have a review. Chris Cooper is going to give us a review of Rocket Man. That's the biopic on the early years of Sir, we have to get it right, Sir Elton John. So we have that review coming up a little later okay. on in the show. Lots okay. of good stuff. Okay. All right. So uh, we start with the Equality Act. Now, we've been telling you about this for... <laughs> 40 years, more than 40 years. Actually, it was introduced first in 1973, That's essentially. Right. The variations of it. And it has finally passed the U.S. House of Representatives by a vote of 263 to 173. We got eight Republicans. We did look there. It is eight Republicans. It's really important. A lot of people... That yeah, that vote was presided over uh, from the chair, not by Nancy Pelosi, but by out uh, Congress member Sean Patrick Maloney. A very nice touch. Uh, I, sh I think I should tick off the Republicans who voted for it, because that's really the news. Uh, Susan Brooke of, in of where? Indiana. Uh, Mario Diaz-Ballard of Florida. Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania. Will Hurd of Texas. Greg Walden of Oregon. And three New Yorkers, John Katko, Tom Reed and Elise Stefanik. That's the news. The, obviously, this wouldn't have happened without the Democratic leadership. Right. And of course, we, we're, we're probably not going to get it in the in the uh, Senate right. because we need re we need Republican le leadership to right. accede to Trump that. has vowed to quash this, so it might not go any further. But oh, I think this is they're all complaining this is going to bust up the restrooms. It's going to hurt women's rights, and this is what Republicans are saying. Like you give a crap about <laughs> women's rights, you know? We should point out too. We were both a little surprised with how it was placed in the New York Times. It was not on the cover of the New York Times. I think page 15, A15, yeah. covered this story. I mean, people say, oh, well, uh, you know, it uh, can't go anywhere in the Senate and Trump's opposed it, so what's the big deal? No, the big deal is you've gotten everybody in the House on the record, on, the record. on this bill. On the record. Our bill. And, it, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to do that in the Senate uh, unless they allow a vote. If they do allow a vote, though, which is still up for grabs, then we will have everybody on the record there, too. So, so I think I think really big news if it's signed into law, discrimination against queer people will become illegal. I don't think there's anything across bigger the than country. That. And boy, do we need it now because we're, of course, reading about things across the country where states are discriminating against us and things like that. Um, by the way, there's a, there's a new Pew poll that says uh, support for same-sex marriage in this country has plateaued. I saw that at around 61, 62%. That's right, with 31% disapproving. It, it, you know, it's not really statistically different from a couple of years ago, but 15 years ago, 60% opposed same-sex mm. marriage and only 31% supported. It continues to go up among women but down among men. Oh, see, that's the frightening, that's the frightening <coughs> part of this statistic, is that it is going down 
amongst men. Well, you know, men are lo- men feel they're losing their place in society and uh, their, their their predominance and all this, and they don't like sharing right. a lot of men. I- and they have to, we've got to get over it, guys. We've got to get over it. I think, too, after many, many years of seeing it going in one direction, the right direction, I think I forgot that it would ever plateau or stop. I got used to it well, of going course, in, in one direction. Of course, you know, well, I mean, you know, we, I get, maybe we should talk about, before before we talk about some other good news, the, the horrible news mm. out of Alabama with this draconian mm. uh, abortion law, basically banning it in all circumstances, 99-year sentences for those who perform abortions. Um, but even Pat Robertson says it goes too far. When Pat Robertson says it goes too far. And the head of the uh, uh, House Democrats, Kevin McCarthy, it goes too far. And this may make it harder for John Roberts and the Supreme Court to say, no, that's a good law right. that th- locks people up for 99 right. years. Uh, th- tougher, because they want to get rid of Roe v. Wade. And they want to find a way to do that. But are they going to even take this law? And then there are all these heartbeat laws that are mm-hmm. passing in Georgia and Ohio and all these things. This, this is the trend. We're, we're, we're on the wrong side of history here. This, but, this is certainly what the What was the film company in Georgia that said, we're not going down there now that you're... Netflix has pulled out. So Netflix have already said that if this continues, the tax breaks they get to film in Georgia will not make any difference. Kristen Wiig, we know her right, from Saturday right. Night Live. She's also pulled out of her next project if it is indeed shot in Georgia. She's, they they, they did Bridesmaids down there. Did Bridesmaids and, down there. There's lots of tax breaks. A lot of TV shows move to, to Georgia to film because of the tax breaks. But even with these breaks, Netflix and Kristen Wiig has said that they will not, not be part of this. It's now, gonna, gonna you know, there were huge differences. demonstrations across the country about these abortion bans. And lots of people in states like ours are saying, you need to come here and get an abortion. We'll put you up. We'll pay for your transportation. I mean, and, and you know, people may wonder, why are we talking about this on the Gay USA show? This is about you know, the ability to control your own body, mm-hmm. especially if you're, uh, you know, for, for women. So um, Ohio is basically saying an 11-year-old rape victim has to bear her child. Mm. Uh, you know, Susan Collins of Maine, who voted for Kavanaugh and is up for election next year, says, I don't understand why this is happening right now. It's <laughs> happening right now because you put Kavanaugh on the court. Mm. The Senate has also voted to advance Trump's pick who fought against marriage equality for many, many years. The Senate inches closer to making Howard Nielsen yes. Jr. a lifetime federal judge. He has argued in the past to ban same-sex marriage. Every Republican, with the exception in this case of Senator Susan Collins, has indeed voted for yeah, him. Yeah, because she's up for election next year. But, but you know, it's in international news, but we really have to celebrate what happened in Taiwan. Let's do it. Yes. Taiwan is the first country in Asia uh, where, the, where, where they have voted to legalize same-sex marriage. Uh, we have a picture of the president of Taiwan, Here it is. President Tsai, uh, T-S-A-I, uh, uh, signing the bill. Uh, she tweeted, love one, we took a big step towards true equality and made Taiwan a better country. And then there's a picture of her holding up the bill with ah. the other officials there, the new law. Now, they did this under a court order. If they didn't do this by May 24th, it was going to go into effect anyway. Yes. They, they stalled it for like a couple of years. But there was really a 33-year battle in Taiwan to do this. This didn't just happen overnight. Right. And it's, it's, it's a fantastic breakthrough. We have a picture of the first joint wedding for uh, a gay couple, <laughs> a lesbian couple, and a non-gay couple all together because we're all in this together uh, who are doing this. It's, uh, you know... We avoided having just to do civil unions, which is what the right wing wanted to do. And uh, we have <coughs> marriage equality in Taiwan. We, we do indeed. Back yeah. to a national news. <coughs> Pete Buttigieg, Mayor Pete, killed it on Fox News in the best possible way. He's getting great reviews for well, his yeah, performance. Well, yeah, he, he did Fox News. I mean, this was, a, this was a big controversy in the Democratic Party. There he is with Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace. Being interviewed. So Chris Wallace, um, before, before Mayor Pete's appearance, Donald Trump, the president, took to Twitter to slam the network for, quote, yeah. wasting airtime <laughs> on the out candidate. Chris Wallace did fight back, slapped back, and he said, quote, I actually think whether or not you like his opinions, Mayor Pete has a lot of substance and a fascinating bio. And Britt Hume, 
of Fox News yep. uh, said, uh, say this for Buttigieg, he's willing to be questioned by Chris Wallace, something you haven't done You've barely done since you've been president. It's it's wild what's going on. It was a fascinating performance. Wallace, and he got a lot of applause for did. some of the things he, he said. Let me tell you one of them. So Chris Wallace did um, ask him about the president's tweets. The president has already come up with a, with a nickname for Mayor Pete. Pete responded, I don't care. He also talked about how hard it and is. He got a, and he got a big ovation. Massive, I don't care about the tweets. Massive stand, uh, ovation. He got a standing ovation at the end. He also said it's hard to look away from some of the outrageous, and they really are outrageous things that the president says and does. He said, quote, it is the nature of grotesque, grotesque things that you can't look away. Another right. big hand for that right. at, uh, at this debate. Now, now, as you said, Elizabeth Warren has said that she will not be part of any of these she debates. She says, on Fox I News. give Fox News a hard pass, and she called it a hate for profit machine, which it is. She, she said it, and she wants no part, part of that. So I don't know. You do Fox? Uh, I've not been on Fox in a, in a, in a long time. The, interesting, though, I should point out, the ratings for this were, were phenomenal. I've never, I've never been on Fox. N oh, no, that's not true. When they got started, no, yes. we didn't know exactly we what didn't. it was going to be. We went on Hannity. And uh, uh, um, we, we did, I forget what it was about. This is very early on. They didn't even have a New York outlet then. <laughs> and so Sean says afterwards, we're having trouble getting into the New York market. Could you help us? I said, are you kidding? <laughs> I have an awful confession while we talk about Fox News. I was taken to a Christmas party. It was Sean Hannity's Christmas party. Uh -oh. And I was not aware it was Sean Hannity's Christmas party <laughs> until I got there. It was a Fox News Christmas party. But get this, they did have a um, cocktail of the evening called the Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? This year. Oh my God. This Christmas. That was it. We should talk about this story. I love this story that you did last week. There's been some rumors. Michael Cohen, who's the president's former yes. lawyer, had some rumors out there about Jerry Falwell Jr. and some inappropriate pictures. This has exploded. So we spoke about this on last week's show. Mm -hmm. In the week, in the seven days since then, it has become such a big story, particularly online. These X-rated photographs of... Um, Mr. Jerry Falwell Jr. and the pool boy. Apparently now they're saying do not exist. He does not want to be called called a, a pool boy. He likes pool attendant. Well, Andy. the pictures apparently have been destroyed. The pictures that we don't know what they we are. We don't know what these pictures are. That are upsetting are, Jerry but, Falwell Jr. But people are very ex upset about this, and attorneys are now involved with this. This story, I'm not sure there's that much more to the story, but the story has been recycled and, and gone around social media well, like crazy you know, this week. Even at Jerry Falwell's university, Liberty University, some students are speaking up for gay, their gay friends. And the same thing happened at Taylor University yes. in Indiana. Yes. It's a Christian university where uh, Mike Pence was the commencement speaker. He said, things are great in America, but you're going to be persecuted for being a Christian. So anyway, there were some students who protested. We have a picture there of somebody wearing a rainbow huh. mortarboard, standing up for their gay friends, which is nice. But, but Pence did get a standing ovation. Some people walked out. Thousands signed a petition against him. And by the way, the school forbids homosexual expression. Ay, ay, ay. Texas has passed its anti-LGBTQ Chick-fil-A bill, which might cost them actually a lot of money. So Texas has, has passed the so-called Save Chick-fil-A, uh, fill a chick Chick-fil-A. Thank you. Bill, basically this is a backdoor religious freedom amendment. Mm -hmm. It's a bill that ensures businesses will not be penalized for discriminating. Well, San Antonio uh, you know, said, no, we're not going to have Chick-fil-A at the airport. Yes. And this is what attracted their attention. The Justice Department is getting involved in that. Or is San Antonio discriminating against religion? No, I'm not discriminating against religion. They're discriminating against the fact that it's an anti-LGBT mm -hmm. business. Dozens of Fortune 500 companies now agree with you. Let's finish off on some other Trump stuff, if we can. We can finish off that one. All get right. in. So, great to see that New York has passed a bill to get Trump's state taxes, state taxes and give them to Congress. And it has passed. This is going to happen. We look like we're going to get Donald Trump and his family's state taxes. And how is the president going to mark Memorial Day this year? It looks like he wants to pardon service members who are war criminals. This is his uh, tribute to our service members. Mm. Uh, 
Politico had a big story about how Pence has been given control over health and human services, and that's why, you know, all this horrible stuff is coming down from there to go after Planned Parenthood and to let health care providers discriminate against us. And by the way, New York State Attorney General Letitia James and the city of New York are going after HHS for right. allowing this kind of discrimination. Uh, HHS uh, placed more than a dozen immigrant children in the custody of human traffickers because they weren't clearing people. Th these human traffickers are not just for sex, although some of them are for sex, but also for like, go work on the egg farm oh. and, and as slaves in Iowa, these kind of things. So that's come to attention. Um, and nice to see that the Irish out gay prime minister, the Taoiseach. Yes. Leo Varadkar. <laughs> yes. He said, uh, Trump is thinking of stopping on the way to the commemoration of D-Day or something, is, is going to stop off in Ireland at, yes. his, at his golf course in the west of Ireland. I've seen it in Dunbeg. Oh, you've been oh, there? I didn't play it. I saw uh, the sign right. for it there. I was there in Dunbeg. And uh, first of all, Varadkar doesn't want to meet him at the golf course. Well, Trump wants to meet at the golf course as a photo op. And so he wants to promote his golf course, which he is not doing terribly good business so he wants the photo off the prime minister has said i will meet you but we'll do it at the airport i'm not coming to the golf but course the prime minister also said uh, uh, protesters against trump <laughs> right. would be he's the words that he used they'd be welcome they'd be and, welcome and uh you know and they'll be there they'll be there and uh so uh trump says uh oh so this week uh, so one of the questioners one of the he did some interview where, where the question is, so what about you know seeing uh, Pete Buttigieg up there with his husband on the campaign trail? I have no problem with that, Trump said. I know some of my supporters would, but I have no problem Ugh. with that. But of course, he's appointed nothing but these judges that Ugh. you're talking about who are going to get rid of same-sex marriage if they can Ugh. and take our rights away. All right. All right. Uh, how about some more good news from Chicago? Let's do Chicago good news. What's Lori Chicago? Lightfoot was sworn in as mayor. She's an out lesbian. She, has a, she had her wife and daughter at her side. Uh, she's the first out lesbian, the first African-American woman. She promised reform, and she ch looked at the elected officials sitting up there, <laughs> and she challenged them. And she says, don't stand in my way. And she's actually signing executive orders, <laughs> curbing the power of the council. She's taken on quite a fight she's there. And right away, we did this story this last week. This is Chicago. <laughs> we did this story last week, a national figure here, James Charles, who's a YouTube mm. sensation. You might not have heard of him, but uh, a lot of people I've out heard there of him are now. big fans of this young man. Or they were until he got a, into a fight. And what was his big claim to fame He on is a beauty expert. Yeah. So a beauty vlogger, blogger. And why is he going down? He had a terrible falling out with his mentor, her name, Tati West. In the accusation, she accused him of trying to manipulate straight guys into having sex with him. He lost millions of followers and potentially a lot of money too. He's, He's now crying, fighting back. He? he did cry. He's fighting back saying anything that occurred with guys, other men, was 100% consensual. He also claims that he is still they all say a that, don't virgin. They? So really? nothing. He He's did still not, a virgin. He said How old he, is he? He's 19 years old. Oh. Um, this story, though, is a fascinating. Like, to, to me, I wasn't aware of the power of this young kid. Over 20 million followers on YouTube, people in the beauty business. People who want to be beautiful. Were giving him endorsements. Cover Girl was the first time they had endorsed a guy to be a spokesperson. So this kid now is, is fighting back against these accusations. All right. All right. Um, by the way, I was kind of surprised at this, uh, going back to Trump, the United States of America, mm -hmm. this benighted country, has sanctioned a Chechen group, an anti-gay group, and five individuals for violating the Magnitsky Act. You've heard about that because they've been killing and torturing gay people. And uh, this is done by the U.S. Treasury Department, and they've sanctioned these people over in Chechnya. So, I mean, you know, almost everything coming out of the administration is terrible, but they seem to have, somebody in the administration has drawn a line over this. Someone's drawn a line over this. Elizabeth <coughs> Warren is digging deeper into her LGBTQ agenda. She was asked by 
knew now next.com what she would do on her first day if she mm -hmm. was elected into the White House. And she said she wants to reverse the State Department's decision to deny visas to unmarried same-sex partners of foreign diplomats. The reason this is important is that it is harder to get married in many countries than you assume. In fact, marriage equality is only legal in about two dozen countries. So right. the only way they can stay here with their spouses, their, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, is to be married. Unfortunately, that is not an option in every country. Right. Good for Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, we'd love to have her in. We'd love to have all the candidates in here. Who would be your favorite? Uh, Who would be your first? I'd, I have nothing to here, here is my position on the Democratic <laughs> primary, if you must know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let it all play out. Let's just see who comes to the fore, how they do in the debates. I don't want to. I don't want to give but do my. You do you have no, somebody in your heart? I, I, you don't I, want to I take mean, your hand. I'll have to make a decision in New York about who to vote for. I but it, it will depend upon. It'll be a strategic vote depending on who's in the running at that right. point. So the most important thing for you is defeating. Uh, I'm all right. So is the most important thing defeating Trump? We yes. have to do that. But there's uh, people are of two minds about that. That's why I think Biden is polling the best right, right. now, right? Because people think he's safe. Uh, you know, he's uh, most prominent. Uh, you know, he can do it, and we need to do it, no matter no matter what. But if you win, right, and you don't win with somebody who's really going to change things for the better in many fundamental ways in this country, you're not going to hold power for very long, and you'll be back in the wilderness. Were you impressed? I was very impressed by Mayor Pete on Fox News. Yeah. Impressed? Yeah. I oh, I've always been impressed. I was impressed by him when he ran for chair of the Democratic I National Committee. Right. Didn't do very well. Right. It went to uh, Mr. Perez. But uh, I was very impressed with him there. I mean, he's just a really smart you know, guy. But, guy. but again, you, you know, you can't just, when you get power, you got to do something with it. it. We've criticized President Obama for, you know, going slow on a lot of uh, big issues, you know, and uh, that, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, we, you know, I voted for him, but, uh, but by not fundamentally changing things, there remained all this angst in the country that, uh, you know, that has to, has to be done. So, mm. you know, anyway, you how about you? Uh, I thought Mayor Pete was really impressive. I think, um, Elizabeth Warren's awfully impressive too. Um, at the moment, I'm really sitting back and, and enjoying the process. I think it's fascinating to watch. I like, I can't wait for the debates on two different nights. I'm excited to In see June, those. I think June is close. Well. It's, it's, getting, right. it's getting closer. So um, I, I, I'm with you at the moment. I'm sitting back and, and listening. Uh, I think Elizabeth Warren is, is very impressive. Well, Mayor de Blasio has entered the race at this point, and you know, everybody, uh, people treat, are treating it like a joke, but the, the visceral hatred for him, I mean, I've known Bill for 25 years. I mean, uh, you know, and I, I, I support him a Why does he push, why does he push people's I buttons? Because they, they hate know, him. I don't know exactly. It's vicious. It is, it is, it's it, vicious. It is, it's, it's like, they, I don't think they, this kind of hatred came out for uh, Bloomberg, who was screwing us over in many, many respects. Uh, but uh, I, I don't get it. But, you know, he doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But, of course, his attitude, de Blasio's attitude is, I was nowhere when I ran for mayor. I was at single digits in he the polls, and I won. So, and he, I, I will tell you, in the debates in New York for mayor, he was very impressive. Was impressive. So that's what I'm saying about people being on the stage. All of a sudden, you, you've only heard things about someone, and then you see them interacting with others, and you say, oh, he's, uh, I like this guy, which is why. But of course, you know, Pete Buttigieg is only like at 5% in the 5%. national polls. Only 5%. Okay, what else do we have going on? Well, speaking of New York politics, uh, our friend and sometime co-host, Corey Johnson, who is the speaker of the city council. I think he's fascinated. Yeah, and he's, he's running for mayor. But he came out against the decriminalization of sex work. He said he's for the Nordic model, which is stopping short of prosecuting the sex workers, but going after the, still going after the Johns. He does support a bill in Albany to repeal the law prosecuting people who loiter for the purposes of sex. You know, that loitering law, which was passed in the 70s, right? right. It was all, I mean, it, it was about stopping prostitution on the streets, right. but I mean, you could stop <laughs> to, 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 you know, to read the paper on the street and, you, and they could arrest you, you, could if, you did, if you weren't moving within <laughs> five minutes. And they went after a lot of gay people for this. This, this is a great story. So anyway, he, he, he says he wants to set up services for sex workers, but the advocates are pushing back and saying, you know, you, we, we need to get into decriminalization. And by the way, the district attorney in Brooklyn, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, mm -hmm. has said, I'm for decriminalization. And this woman, out lesbian, Tiffany Caban, who's running for DA of Queens, 
She is for uh, decriminalization as well, and there's a primary in New York for that on June 25th. Do you know this gentleman, Andrew Gerza? I don't. G-U-R-Z-A. He created a hashtag, disabled people are oh. hot. He's been a queer um, disability advocate for yeah. a really, really long time. He came up with this hashtag we should have him on the in show. February. We should, we should. And, and, and Twitter has really embraced it. He said the following, that he's always felt sexy. People with disabilities can be sexy. He said, quote, I know I am as hot as the F word, and now this hashtag's been out for nearly a month and three million times. Three million times it has been tweeted. Hashtag Disabled people are hot. Good well, I mean, uh, can we tell the story about what you said you, in a bar you saw a guy in a wheelchair? I did. Talk I, saw, about that? I saw once and? a being treated terribly, being ignored. How so? Being I ignored, trying to get a drink and, and not being able to be That's served. Terrible. And it's in New York City. And I was really well, surprised the, by the way. In the Reclaim Pride March, which is on June 30th, yes. uh, we're, we're working on making accommodations for people with disabilities who need uh, transportation, essentially. Because we're not having floats and things like that. But there will be conveyances that will help people with disabilities get through that march Very important. as well. Very right, important. And that's coming up on June 30th, as is the Heritage of Pride March, where there'll be a lot of floats. All right. Uh, in, where are we? Um, uh, okay. Oh, California. Now, California, the Board of Education, mm -hmm. passed some new framework for sex education, which, of course, is being very LGBT positive yes. and all that stuff. So conservative parents are rebelling across the state. I think they're seizing upon this issue because, you know, they say, I don't want these kids. So there they are protesting. They protested all across the state, uh, but they're not being, but the, the school districts are not being forced to use the framework. Uh, it's just advisory about if you want to do it right, here's how to do it. You know, so, mm. uh, but but the right wing is, I mean, uh, you know, I worked at Hedrick Martin with Ann Northrup for all those years. We got into the schools to talk about gay stuff and lesbian stuff and uh, transgender stuff and AIDS. Uh, but the teachers were always afraid to talk about it. And the schools have never been a good place in most cases right. for doing sex education. Right. I mean, I think they're trying to do the same thing in, in Britain trying, right now, they're right? They're trying a lot of angry parents. And I think it's to, before, you talk to the children, we have to talk to the teachers so that they're comfortable with, with, with this subject and they don't want to get in trouble. Teachers are they, they don't want to get in trouble with the kids. Yes. When they talk yes. about a thing like this, that's why they would have us in as speakers, because then they didn't have to talk about it. Right. Because, and look, teachers for the most part do not come out, they might be out, they're out to their colleagues now generally, but they don't want to come out. To, they're very afraid, many of them, of coming out to their kids. You can prove me wrong about this, but I mean, even in the city of New York and other places where they've been protected forever, uh, they don't, mm. they, they're nervous about the kids having this information about them. I remember going to a gay bar in Birmingham, England, where I grew up, and seeing a teacher from my high school in the bar, and, um, I'd never thought of teachers as human beings. I well, didn't realize they had a life outside the classroom. And I literally remember to this day being surprised to see. I was finding out that some of my teachers were married heterosexually when I was a kid, you know? I mean, because they didn't, people just didn't talk about their personal lives. Because it. It, it just, they don't want to give the kids weapons against them. Uh, in Chicago, a restaurant cashier allegedly tells a gay couple, we don't want your kind here. <laughs> really? So a high school students, Kendall Anderson and Petter, Savig were at a big boy gyros restaurant and they were kicked out. They were told they don't didn't they know want they have to... a lesbian mayor there That's now. Right. They were told they don't want two guys holding hands. Anderson spoke to the CBS affiliate yeah. in town and he said the guy at the restaurant claims that had it been a boy and a girl, that would be okay, but they do not allow <laughs> two boys to really? be holding hands. Well, that's against in, the law uh, in Chicago and has been for a long time and in the entire state of Illinois. And when we get the Equality Act passed, they should, it'll, be, it'll be illegal nationwide to treat people like that. All right, and speaking of the way people are treated, we have more uh, murders of yeah. transgender women, you know, and, and these are relentless. And why do we hear so much more about it now? Part of it is that they're not misgendering the people when they report on them, yes. right? They used yes. to just say a guy, it was a guy uh, or whatever, but these are, so, all right. In North Philadelphia, mm -hmm. a trans woman, uh, Michelle Washington, shot to death Sunday, May 19th. She was known as Tamika. Uh, she had studied to be a nurse. The killing apparently was related to a robbery. 
uh, a suspect has been arrested. Six trans women of color this year killed in Philadelphia. And mm. then in Dallas, that's right. Uh, trans woman. Now we now get this story. You this will is know her. We've spoken about her on the show. Malaysia Booker, 23 years old, shot and killed May 18th, weeks after the April 12th incident, where several men assaulted her in a parking lot and put it on YouTube and everything. Uh, her friend said she was just tired of getting beaten down, and now she has been killed. So you know, I, look. I, I don't know. We, we never get a lot of details. Right. Why did this murder take place? Right. I, I think a lot of it is because these women are marginalized. They're on the streets. Perhaps it's involvement with drugs or sex work or whatever. Rough crowds. And we need to have more uh, employment options yes. for trans women of color and all trans people as well. And for all uh, LGBT people. Absolutely. To get Absolutely. This stuff. Some right. good news. Nevada has become the fourth state to ban gay and trans panic defense. So Nevada uh -huh. is the fourth state to do this. This ban uh, gets rid of um, the ability to use as a defense that you didn't like someone's sexual orientation. Uh, and so that has gone away. Nevada joins California, Rhode Island, Illinois as states that have passed this. Also to similar legislation, looks like it's gonna be passed in New Jersey, New York, Georgia, Pennsylvania. Georgia? Um, yep, and um, Washington, Which, D.C., well, funny, I know. I'm surprised about Georgia. In Connecticut, the uh, Senate voted to ban discrimination for intersex people, which is a first in the nation. And you know, an intersex baby is born and the parents panic, oh, either, you know, cut the, pain, you know, trim, you know, they, they, they alter the child at birth because they're nervous about, oh, is it one or the other? Mm -hmm. And uh, so Connecticut is taking action on this for intersex people. Uh, Idaho, the legislature blocked a bill to prevent child marriage. <laughs> you know, when, it, when, it, when somebody underage has sex, they can marry the older guy, it's usually the older guy, uh, and avoid a rape charge. And, and Idaho doesn't seem to want to take away that option. Uh, you talked about Nevada uh, and Texas. Uh, Maine passed a bill banning conversion therapy mm. for minors, M-I-N-O-R-S, uh, not people who dig in the ground. <laughs> and I think we are ready to move on to International, so, international news, international aren't we? We have a bisexual Dutch singer called Duncan Lawrence who won the Eurovision Song Contest. So 2019, the Netherlands won this openly bisexual gentleman had an emotional ballad called Arcade. This is the fifth time, the fifth time the Netherlands ha ha have won the show. A little bit of controversy or quite a lot, a of, lot controversy of controversy around the, um, the Eurovision being held in Israel and also to Madonna performing and accepting a million dollars. she was dollars. terrible. She was not her best in it. What's interesting about this is that since it aired live to over a, a billion viewers, really? Madonna has taken the video of her performance and has corrected uh, the sound <laughs> or hired somebody to dub nice a, money. New, a new soundtrack in there. So if you go to Madonna's Instagram or any of her official pages, the performance you will see from the Eurovision is not exactly what aired live. Well, she's gotten a lot of hell for her appearance there, but controversy goes on. Uh, it was nice to see 60, did you see 60 Minutes this week? I did see 60 week? Minutes, I they did. did. They did the uh, Rainbow Railroad. This is the group that helps refugees around the world, LGBT mm. refugees, who are asylum seekers. And they mainly focused on Egypt, Chechnya, and Jamaica, as, and Jamaica especially as the source of people wanting to flee and get the hell out. And literally get you out of the country. They would find ways, often very, very dangerous ways, to get you out of that situation. So what are the three countries they mainly try to send people to? Canada, mm -hmm. Spain, and the Netherlands. Mm. The United States, they'd like to be able to send more people here. Don't forget we had on the show Ricky Nathanson a couple of weeks ago from Nigeria. Yes. She got asylum here in December, which was kind of amazing, trans woman. Because the, the United States has obviously tightened everything up. But uh, we need, to, but Rainbow Railroad. Rainbow um, Railroad, uh, 60 minutes, good for them. We have a story out of London. So Dustin Lance Black was mm -hmm. barred from um, Tom Daly, that's his husband, a, a, a diver. But you're not gonna believe the reason why. So the Oscar winner Dustin took to social media. What was the event? To, it was a swimming, um, 
event. It was a diving event at the London Aquatic was Tom Center. Tom was diving, and they wanted to take their son Robert, who they their first child that they got last year. He wanted to take his son Robert to see his dad dive. They were not allowed inside the event because Robert, the child, was in a stroller. No strollers allowed at the London Aquatic Centre. All right, That's, that doesn't seem like a totally unreasonable rule. Well, I'm a little, I'm a little sick of a lot of the strollers <laughs> on the subways, I and especially know. the ones that are as big as buses <laughs> themselves. <laughs> I'm, no, I, I'm going to come across as anti-child. <laughs> no, and no, I'm no, not. There's also a story out of Australia, Melbourne. The police broke a man's arm. They raided an LGBTQ bookstore. Raided it. They 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 mistakenly identified somebody who th they thought was in a car jacking case. This was not the case. So at two o'clock in the morning, two a.m., they broke into a bookstore and went into some dark rooms, shining their torches, and ended up with this gentleman having a broken arm. Terrible. All right. Uh, better news in Kenya. The high court there is set to rule on the challenge to the anti-sodomy law on Friday. Uh, so you'll know about this uh, before we do. The case uh, was started by three Kenyan gay organizations in 2016. The anti-gay laws date back to 1930, colonial days, with Britain. And <laughs> the, the Constitution outlaws discrimination of any kind. I don't know what the hell that means. I mean, but, you know, that's, there's some broad anti-discrimination language in the Constitution that they're banking on. Um, also in Kenya, you know how they have LGBT refugees from other countries there, yes. even though it's not so great, yes. it's worse elsewhere, like in Uganda. They, have, they basically rioted and they were met with tear gas there in mm. Kenya because they don't like the way they're being treated. In Moldova, I had a niece who worked in Moldova for the Peace Corps. Oh, you did? She had to cover up her tattoo. You're not allowed to have tattoos. In Moldova, you're not on allowed her, to tattoo? On her, on her ankle. Is that a police corps? We can't have a tattoo. Oh. We can't display a tattoo in Moldova. Anyway, so they've had an annual pride march there, right? Since 2013. But this year, the anti-gays had a family festival <laughs> to counter it. And who led it? Oh. The president of Moldova. Oh, oh. The princess of Norway. But the oh. police protected the gays. Thank, there you go. Uh, the princess of Norway is dating a bisexual gentleman, a shaman out of Los Angeles. So this guy is apparently a spiritual leader to the stars. He has clients including Gwyneth Paltrow, Rosanna Dawson, and now Princess Martha Louise of Norway. She announced this to uh, over 100,000 social media who followers. Are the, who are the gay members of your royal family? <laughs> you know, I was in London once, just for fun, and I had all this bulky, I held all this bulky video equipment with me. I was gonna do some reporting there for this show. So I just decided to go into Leicester Square and say, what do you think about the news today that Prince Edward has come out? And they go, it was, it won't go. No, he didn't. <laughs> and, she, and I said, oh, yes, yes. And here's the report from the Associated Press. And she, then she goes, well, we always knew. Uh, <laughs> I think Jimmy Kimmel has a bit like this. That he stole from you. But I, I, I watched, I watched a, um, a, a spe this is, we're being a little discursive here. <laughs> but I watched a special where Edward did a thing on Edward the Seventh, you know, mm, the Duke of yes, Windsor who yes. left and everything. Of course, they didn't talk about the gay, the gay rumors there, but there was a uh, uh, there was another brother in the family who was gay and had to get married to a woman in order to you know stop the rumors that he was gay. I, I'm told from my my friends and my sources in London who know the royals not terribly well, but they know. And they say the palace is a pretty gay-friendly place. Except and for Philip. Philip might be a little difficult. He saw two, he saw he two might... people kissing uh, at, the, uh, you know, at, a, at a garden party, and he said, I don't want these queers here he anymore. Might... But I think the queen and certainly other members of the family are She pretty... needs to speak out. More. Well, actually, you know, the young ones. Uh, the young William, ones are Harry, they, they, they talk correct. about gay, transgender, yeah. all that. They're, they're We're getting there. much more with it. All right, Tunisia. <laughs> the LGBT group in Tunisia called Shams, of all things, <laughs> uh, they won a court ruling this week to exist, Look the right that. to exist. You know, that was a big thing in New York when <laughs> Lambda Legal was formed. It took forever to get a, get a court order that they could register in the state of New York in 1973. All right, 
Lambda. So anyway, but the, and now they say, okay, we won that one. We're going to go to court <laughs> to try to decriminalize gay sex. And a presidential commission in Tunisia has recommended that. All right. Hong Kong. Do we have this picture? Yeah, yes, we do. Yeah, I love this story. Go ahead. The Hong Kong, so they've reversed a ban on an ad featuring a gay couple. There they are walking along the beach. For Cafe this Pacific. Cafe Pacific, that's right. So this... Um, this ad was running at the airports or on train stations and it was removed. It, it has been restored now and Cafe Pacific has told their staff how important it is. To well, there's a huge gay protest about the taking down of it. Very, you know? very angry, but the, um, the company behind the ad really believe that they, um, they support their, their gay brothers and sisters. Big fuss about this. The um, tagline of the ad is move beyond labels. So those ads are back up. Look in Hong Kong. Very nice. Very I, nice. I've, I've got a, uh, uh, speaking of Asia, a couple of stories out of Indonesia. A former police brigadier is suing for anti-gay harassment and being fired. He was fired in 2017 for tarnishing the reputation of the police force by engaging in deviant sexual behavior, even though Technically, gay sex is not illegal in Indonesia except in the Acha province, which is the Sharia law place. Anyway, um, he, the case could be a big breakthrough there. And Vice News did a thing on a former Indonesian, you know, remember East Timor and all the yes, trouble there yes, and everything? Yeah. Well, it's now a country called Timor Leste, L E S T E. I hope I said that right. They have a, a, a gay movement that's, they have 1,500 at their pride Good parade grief. now. In, in, Timor Lesti, uh, so uh, and it, and it's a they're, they're even getting some support from the Catholic Church there, which is we didn't we don't get much from the Catholic we don't Church get that here. here. We totally uh, don't. Know, I was sorry to see the Australian elections. The center right government uh, won again. Um, that was kind of a shock. Uh, in Brussels Pride, they have a hundred thousand at Brussels Pride, wow. right? 40 LGBT protesters tried to block it over the corporatization and the presence of police in the parade. There have been these protests in the, in, in over here as well. They had a reclaimed Pride banner. Police used tear gas on them and pepper spray. Uh, the theme of the main parade was intersectionality. This is going on worldwide. People are very angry with these corporates sponsors and organizations and that they don't like police and a lot of people don't like police in uniform in the parade because of the way we've been treated by the police and you know we are still waiting for our apology here in new york from the police who conducted the stonewall raid mm. i mean not from them specifically but from the police right, department the organization. it does count for, does something, count for to something to say we shouldn't be right. and, but of course the problem is the police in new york still treat a lot of transgender people like crap arresting them. We know I work at New Alternatives. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board there for homeless LGBT youth. And our kids are getting picked up all the time for just walking around because you're transgender and you're, oh, we're just going to say that you're a prostitute. I mean, it's like, stop it. Mm. Pop it. What's happening with the march here in New York? Well, it's, it's, it's you know, it's going, going full steam ahead. We're, we're going to meet, well, there's going to be the big parade at, at noon with, with Heritage of Pride. And then we're going to have this Reclaim Pride march we're going to meet in the village at 9.30 in the morning. Just go down to the village by the stone wall. We're going to take off by 9.30 a.m., march uptown. No hierarchy, no prominent you know, politicians or anything. You bring whatever sign you want right. and, and march with us. We're going to march up 6th Avenue, the original route. And we're going to go to Central Park and have a big rally the in original, the park. The original was 6th Avenue? The, the original route was 6th Avenue, and I don't think they had a permit. And, they, and for years, they only gave us two lanes of 6th <laughs> Avenue. So we're marching. And cars were. And, we, and I only started in 1974, but we still only had two lanes of 6th Avenue. And you had the traffic on the side. You fucking rag. <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff is terrible. Um, and finally, in 1977, we were so angry over Anita Bryant and losing the referendum in Florida, we said, we're taking Fifth Avenue, and we mar we walked over to Fifth Avenue. We put women and children and our parents and everything in the front, and because there was a moratorium on Fifth Avenue parades, the Fifth Avenue merchants got a moratorium in the city on new parades because you know it, they don't think it's nice for business when it's taken over for parades. Nice. So we took over uh, Fifth Avenue, and we had Fifth Avenue for many years, going up, mm -hmm. going down, whatever. You know, this year. Sixth Avenue, Sixth Avenue to the park. And 
Stonewall. Nine o'clock at the Stonewall. And then, you know, again, you'll have plenty of time to go downtown and be part of the parade, which will be going on forever, if you want to be part of that, the Mardi Gras parade. Back to international news. In India, um, the sprinter Dute Chand is uh, the first out LGBTQ athlete. She's a lesbian. She had to win a court battle to compete because she's got some condition where she's got high testosterone. That's yes. not completely resolved. But that she's, court battle but is she's still, come out as a lesbian. And the battle's still going on, yes. And in Australia, Andy Brennan is the first out gay male soccer player. Mm. He said, no straight person has to ever question how those around them might respond to their sexuality. Think about that. Straight people go through life, no one's going to question you on it. Uh, maybe they might question your choice of partner, but they're not going to question your mm. sexuality in general. And the teammates and coaches have been amazing. In Belfast, 8,000 people marched for marriage equality, and they're tell saying to Theresa May, you've got to stand up to the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland, right. and you've got to pass it in the Parliament in London so that we can have marriage equality in the only place in the United Kingdom where we don't have it. Yeah, it's very important. It's very she important. A thousand people, that's an enormous amount of people that turns up. In Austria, they issued the first third gender identity document to an intersex citizen. They can get an X on their passport. In Mexico, the president, uh, Orbrador, attended uh, uh, an Idaho bit uh, event, you know, the mm -hmm. International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, by, by Intersex Phobia. Um, in St. Petersburg, Russia, four were arrested for trying to have a protest. Uh, in Cuba, the police arrested the guy who organized the rogue uh, gay march there. That's pretty terrible. Mm. And, uh, and in Kenya, we mourn the loss of, uh, we have a picture of him, Binyavanga Wenaina. Mm. This is a very famous mm. author there, only 48 years old. Right. He died in Nairobi after a short illness. He was an award-winning author, and he was the, really the first prominent out gay person there. Time magazine named him one of the eight, 100 most influential people in the world for his gay rights activism. He said he came out because he wanted to chip away at shame. Mm. Okay, uh, in, uh, entertainment news. Let's jump right in, what have we got in entertainment news? So a gay romance in Grey's Anatomy has been such a hit. Producers have announced that they are gonna continue it into the next season. So we have two actors, Dr. Nico Kim, played by Alex Landy, and his boyfriend, Dr. Levy, are coming back. They'll be back on, on the show. Also, um, Queer Eye is getting a Japanese production. So they're taking Queer Eye to Japan. They said that even though they do not speak Japanese, the language, the words do not matter because it's all about feelings. Wait a minute, they're not going to have a Japanese cast? They they're they're going to bring, they're they're gonna gonna bring the Americans the over American there? The American boys are going to Japan. Wanda Sykes is finally speaking out about the whole Roseanne debacle. So she yes. was a big executive producer on the reboot of that show. She said it was the morning of the second season, so they were all celebrating when those awful remarks were made. She said she got phone calls very early in the morning. She could not condone it. She needed to get ahead of it. She just couldn't be silent. So that's when she quit her job. She also talked too in this interview with the New York Times about Roseanne's struggle with mental Health. She also talked about all the politicians in Virginia doing blackface. <laughs> she, she, she grew up in Virginia. She did. She did. And she was pretty funny she about did. that. John Barrowman, who's a, a pretty yeah. big star, certainly over in Britain, he is here too, says that he knows for sure, he's 100% sure, there are many more gay athletes out there. He doesn't say how he knows, but he's encouraging all all of them. Is this the guy who was on Doctor, the, the Doctor Who spinoff? He is indeed, yes. Yeah. Very, he's very a handsome. Good singer. Good Amer singer. He's American originally, isn't he? I think he's British. Yeah. I'll check. I'll check. Now, out. Pose is coming oh, back right. for the second season. So they just dropped a new teaser and it's all about voguing. Second season starts June 11th. We're going to jump forward five years. So this is what they're letting us know about the, the season two of the show. Madonna has a huge hit with Vogue and how that changes the ball and drag community oh, really? that the show is, is based up on. Also more Queer Eye news, Tan France, who's the fashion guy on the show, he's getting a spin-off show next in fashion. This is going to compete designers against one another. When are they going to come in here and reform familiar. us? We or should, me, anyway. <laughs> you, you, look, you look just fine. And also, there's a British, a British filmmaker who's talking about situational homosexuality, which he believes happens... Prison? 
in prison and in boarding schools in Britain. So well, his name that's their is excuse. Louis Trudeau. Is that right? He's Justin's brother. Justin was married to Jennifer Aniston. Uh -huh. So his Thoreau, cousin. Yeah. Justin Thoreau's cousin Lewis is saying that when he went to the Westminster School of, for Boys in London, there was a lot of situational homosexual activity. Oh, it's just sort of traditional. A little, that's, that's right. Also, do Ariana Grande, who's on tour, was spotted in a San Antonio bar, gay bar in Texas called Heat. She went in there and people were very, very excited to see her. I'm told that on her tour, when she stops in a city by you, uh, she might make an appearance that night or the night before. At your gay local bar. gay bar. Uh, local. Elizabeth Taylor used to do that in West Hollywood. Really? Oh, how it was her favorite bar. It was uh, to go to the gay bar, yes. She was a, she was a fixture. I wish I'd been there that night. RuPaul is explaining, we spoke about this on last week's show, it was the big Met Ball, Anna Winter's big fabulous event up at the Met. RuPaul was there dressed in boys' clothes. She said that she thought, or he thought, about going in drag, but he thought every man, quote, was going to go as divine from the John Waters movie, and he didn't want to be in a room with everybody in drag. He also said, too, drag is very uncomfortable, and it's a long night, and he didn't want to hurt. So um, Divine that's... is my twin. We were both October 19th. <laughs> is that true? Yes. I love Divine. Hairspray oh, please. with Divine well, not just hairspray. is still so great. Also, you know, too, the... Female Trouble. Oh, that's a there great... Was, there was this film where... Pink where Flamingo? The, Flamingo? Pink what? Flamingos oh. is the one where Divine had to eat all yes, the dog yes, crap, yes, right? Yes, 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 yes. And, and John Waters said, said, said to Divine, I'm really sorry I made you eat all that dog crap <laughs> because it looks like the movie's not going to do anything. But, of course, it became a cult hit. It did, it did. And then it died too soon. That's right. A big, big screener, a big trailer's come out for Downton Abbey. So Downton Abbey, the yes. hit TV show has been made into a movie. I watched the trailer. We have the trailer out now, right, and um, Barrow, the very, very handsome butler, a little devious in the TV Please. show, uh, has a same-sex kiss in yes. this. It's very, and, and it doesn't look so guilty It this doesn't time. look so guilty. And I hear Imelda Staunton is joining the cast. You hear right also, too. For the movie. We should put it looks out. like great fun. It looks like a lot of fun. And in the movie, something big happens, an event. I'm not spoiling anything here, because they say, let you know yeah. in the trailer. The king and queen come to visit. This is 1927. Yes. Right? They so come. we're talking about George the Fifth. Fifth George I the guess. Fifth. They come and, to uh, visit. And Mary of Tech. They <laughs> <laughs> Why do we know these things? <laughs> they come to visit the Abbey. So if you're interested in Diet and Abbey, you're in for a real treat. They did the exhibit here in New York on 47th Street where they brought Diet and Abbey alive. They brought yeah, the, did you go? I did and I loved Did you? It. I did go. I got a top hat. I did. They were selling Why stuff. Why aren't you wearing it? <laughs> Next time I'm on the show. <laughs> All right. Uh, as, uh, there's a new documentary coming out about Chelsea Manning, uh, HX Chelsea, uh, June 7th on HBO. Uh, she was ordered back to jail again. You know, they, the grand jury expired that she was supposed to testify to, and she wouldn't. So th that, and then they had to let her out. Now they started a new grand jury, and they locked her up again. And she will not testify against WikiLeaks. Uh, uh, Lola, the, um, uh, the costume from Kinky Boots, we have a picture of this. Uh, it's now in the Smithsonian <laughs> Institution. How did this get past the Family Research Council? Look at this, Lola, kinky boots. Uh, hey, you know, it's stadium. terrible. Uh, I'm a little distracted when I have one of the most 100 most influential <laughs> people in New York so. with me. Uh, uh, but uh, we skipped AIDS news, and we, we shouldn't. <gasps> we shouldn't. Uh, this was the big week that Gilead had to testify in front of a congressional committee. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez lit into the guy, head of Gilead, this guy O'Day, Daniel O'Day, and she said, why does Truvada cost $2,000 a month in the United States and is sold generically in Australia for $8 a month? Oh. Gilead made $3 billion a year on it. And his answer was uh, patent protection here, all this nonsense. Oh, this provides money for research for future AIDS drugs. What a bunch of nonsense. AOC is impressive. She exactly. comes prepared. I just, yeah, she, you know, she's fantastic. She's, she gets to the point. She doesn't waste her time. She doesn't just grandstand. Right. She really gets to right. the nub of things. Uh, anyway, um, this, uh, 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 I, the thing with pharmaceutical drugs in this country, I just don't, I don't understand why Congress doesn't do something, but they never do.
It's an outrage. Uh, in o California, the, the Senate passed a bill to authorize pharmacists to furnish PrEP and PEP without a prescription, and it prohibits insurance companies from requiring prior authorization to obtain PrEP coverage. Okay. Mm. How much time do we have, Bill? What do we have left? I think we have a, Two minutes and uh, we have a big seconds. review. We should do, get to our review of Rocket Man. So the Elton John movie is coming out, and a friend of our show, Chris, I think. Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper gave a review. What do we have? Well, he just says uh, it's very much, in many ways, follows the, the Bohemian Rhapsody kind of thing, but except it's much more jazzy. And he says, Rocket Man seems a, lit, a bit less squeamish about gay sex and more willing to explore the demons, Elton's dad, the angels, his partner, uh, Bernie Taupin, the songwriting partner, and uh, uh, played by Jamie Bell. Mm. And, and of course, Taron Edgerton is playing Elton, and Elton's very happy with it. And uh, he says, uh, those who are already fans of Elton John in particular will enjoy trying this movie on. We will give you Chris's complete res review uh, in our email that Great. we're going to send out. Nice being with you, Great. Rob Shooter. And we're going to go out with the, uh, we'll at least start you off on the trailer for Rocket Man. <laughs> Seeming I could hear the whole tune in my head. It was all there, I could see all the notes, and I just had to get it out. It's a little bit funny. This feeling inside. What did you say your name was again? My name is... Reggie! Reginald Dwight. Reginald? That's my granddad's name. So that is a fat boy from nowhere. Get to be a soul man. You gotta kill the person you were born to be in order to become the person you want to be. I'm thinking of changing my name to Elton. But that's my name. Yeah, I know. You could be the best-selling artist in America if you desire. I was trying to do something bold. Why are you still something flashy? Can you even play the piano in those? Let him know who you are. And just don't kill yourself with drugs. So how does it feel to be a star? It's never gonna last. Let's just enjoy it while we can. First sleeping arrangements get out. All of this is gone. I just hope you realise you're choosing a life of being alone forever. Don't you want to just sing without this ridiculous paraphernalia? People don't pay to see Reg Dwight. They pay to see Elton John. Sorry. Hang on. Hey, how much pressure I'm under? Not really. I'll still be collecting my 20% long after you've killed yourself. Maybe I should have tried to be more ordinary. You were never ordinary.